What a lineup we have for this fourth and final quarter final of the compound women's individual. Let's go down to the field of play for the introductions. Well, what a matchup we have here. Paige Pierce of the United States of America, the world number eight at 26 years old, goes up against Sara Lopez, also 26, the world number one. Lopez added the world crown, her first ever world championship gold medal to her trophy cabinet just a few days ago and is going for title number six at the Hyundai Archery World Cup Finals. Lopez of Colombia to get us underway. Massive match this one. Okay. Wow, <laughs> such a fast shot to start us off straight in the 10. Contrast much longer hold from Page. A little bit moving around and into the nine. I think this is going to be relentless from uh, Lopez. A little change to a sight. These archers get 20 seconds to shoot. And uh, Paige Pierce taking most of that time up, I would say. Kind of grouping there from Lopez and the perfect 30 to start things off. She's going to lead. Sticking to a game plan for 28. Not a bad start from Pierce, but uh, a two-point lead already for Lopez. Okay, it's a feature of uh, the Colombians' game, uh, more so now than I think ever before. She is ready. She's pretty much locked and loaded within seconds of releasing the arrow. She can't, of course, can't draw, but she is ready to draw the second the stopwatch starts on her side of the scoring board. Yeah, she's very, very quick. Um, you know, shooting that trigger, it's difficult to say, you know, how much of this is a conscious action, you know, she's getting straight on and off it goes, or, you know, is it a truly sort of subconscious shot where she's just putting a thumb on and, and thinking about back tension, but it is very quick. I'm tempted to say she might be punching these, but difficult to say. But whether she is or not, the pressure that she puts on her opponent by shooting so fast is part of her game plan, it's part of her tactic. It may well be, it's going to give them less time to recover and especially as Paige Pierce is using quite a lot of the time as well, she's got a long hold so it could be a factor. Pierce training by two after just one end, will shoot first in the second. Counted down on that one, four seconds left and out into the eight. That's troubling for Paige Pierce. First drop points for Lopez though. ring for the Colombian. Well, a 27. Oh, a 
does open the door massively for Lopez. She doesn't look like she's going to drop four points, in, even though there are three sets left to go. Yeah, the, the judge came over to Paige Pierce after that first end, and, like, we don't know what he said. I'm going to speculate. You know, often the problems that might arise is drawing your bow too early, like we said, that, that clock gets switched between the arches. The other thing he might have said, which is the possibility, he might have said if she was drawing too high. She might be that a bow arm was too high as she started to draw the arrow, so therefore the arrow would be pointing up into the air. So that would be called a high draw. So you can only keep your hands at a level place so that the arrow is level to the ground and pointing at the target. So it might be that he picked up on something like that and she's had to change her draw slightly. I'm only speculating, but that's that's all I can pick out really. And perhaps why we've got a, a not so good end there. So quick question, why, why are you not allowed to draw higher and have a high draw? So b if your front arm is much higher than your back hand, then if, if you were to release prematurely, the arrow would travel for a long way, so it wouldn't be safe. We've got to keep it within the target zones. There you go, we'll keep an eye on that then. Fr watch that to the left hand of Paige Pierce. Start of the third. Just the way she's scored, looking at, at the bow, she's, right, she's reset. Uh, something's problem. It's probably the timing clocks. They probably haven't been set in the right way. They have. There's a mix up of who is to shoot first. Should be Paige Pierce. Uh, the referee just ho holding on here. It's going to reset everything, I think, on the timing clock. You can see that green backed clock on the right hand side. That's Lopez's side of the shooting line. It should be a clock on the left hand side. So the trailing archer would, would start first, so it would have been Paige to start there. Obviously, there's been a, a sort of issue with that. Paige has got an interesting quiver on. She's got a, a left-handed front-facing quiver, if you like, pointing in the opposite direction. So we get end number three underway after a false start. And Paige Pierce, after a false start in the second, has found a way into the ten. Nine. Just making that adjustment, doesn't look phased. look like good shots you can see that back elbow going round good back tension they're just quick looks like that went high and into the nines for a 29 it's so solid here from Lopez a 29 for her but she still leads by four points with two more ends to go. This is already looking very tricky for Paige Pierce, despite her being the world number eight. Lopez just doesn't give away many points. She really doesn't, you know, she, Sarah Lopez has been, you know, she's indisputably the, probably the best women's compound archer there's ever been. Um, Five-time uh, World Cup final finalist and... You know, the only concern I had for her today was really would the pressure get to her to try and get that sixth one? And there's so much pressure on her, but she's come out here to shoot, and, you know, doing more than enough. She certainly is. The bottom half of the draw featured uh, matches between Americans and Colombians. I mean, there could have been two Americans in. Well, we've seen Valdez go through for Colombia, and it's looking likely that it will be an all Colombian semi final at the bottom of the draw. Two more ends to go, though. Lopez leading by four. Pierce will shoot first again. And Sarah with a dot on the front of her lens sight. Paige has got 
a little fiber pin see that wrap around the outside just going through the center of that scope there so just slightly different ways of aiming Again, two in a row for Pierce, but not enough really, especially when Lopez puts in another 30, her second of the match, and now the lead has opened up to five points. She's very relaxed, but she's got to push this over the line. We've got three more arrows each for each of the archers in the next end. Uh, it's not impossible to come back from five behind but it would take a spectacular loss of focus and concentration from Lopez. Yeah, it really would, especially in these conditions. I mean, it's looking pretty good out there today. Occasionally, we see little bits of wind across the venue, but generally fully still. So <laughs> commentator's curse can't see anything too much going wrong here. Sarah looking quite serious, isn't she? She's, she's obviously focused, but there's no laughing today that it's, she means business. Yeah, she certainly does. And uh, the perfect 30 is the kind of business that she's in. Lopez going for this history-making sixth Hyundai Archery World Cup Finals title. Leads by five. Time for end number five here. Paige Pierce trailing. Has just got to put down big scores to put some pressure on Lopez. that head nod she knows it was a good feeling good shot Sarah so quick again super confident in her shot process Coach just talking her through. A little bit of frustration, perhaps even anger creeping into Paige Pierce's process, but uh, it pushes her on to another 29. That's three in a row. It means a five is all that's required for Lopez to keep the dream alive, and she gets another 30, the third one of the match for a 148 out of a possible 150. Sara Lopez gets a warm congratulations from Paige Pierce, and Lopez continues her attempt to get her sixth Hyundai Archery World Cup final title here in Yankton, South Dakota, in the United States of America. Well, if we needed it, there is confirmation from the target judge that uh, Sara Lopez is through to the semi-finals where she'll face her compatriot, Laura Valdez, for a place in the history-making gold medal match.